Okay, so in this video, as promised, I'm going to show you how you can start doing animating with just action scripts, and you don't have to use the timeline. It's going to be very basic in the beginning. We're going to start building that over time. And there are going to be aspects of other parts of, uh, of action script that we're going to have to learn in order to really create more more robust action script based animations. So be, be, be patient. We will get there over time. But let's go ahead and start with the basics about uh, linear animation with action script. So I have a sample project here, which is uh, just a single object that's on the stage. It's a, it's a regular movie clip. I've called it Red Dot. On the, on the main timeline, I have uh, I've put action script. And I, if you notice, I, don't have a, I don't, actually don't have a tween on the timeline. Before we get into the actual code, I want to show you what happens when I run this. If you notice, the dot moves every second a certain amount of uh, pixels across the screen. In this case, it's working in a, uh, in a diagonal direction moving to the lower, lower right-hand corner. And you notice that it stops after a certain amount of time. It actually stops after 10 seconds. So let's go ahead and walk through the code, and you can actually start seeing how we put this together. At the beginning, I've created a new timer. And if you remember, the timer class is something that I can use that automatically broadcasts when a timer event, or when I could say my timer is clicked a certain, num a certain number of milliseconds. In this case, the timer class is, is, is ticking every single 1,000 milliseconds, which is equal to one second. And I've set it so that it only does it 10 times. I then I've then created these two other variables called slope x and slope y. In the previous video, I reintroduced you to the concept of slope, which represents the change in x over the change of y of, an, of, a, of a sloped line. So when I actually go from one location to another, there is a distance I have to move on the x-coordinate and the distance I have to move on the y-coordinate. This is actually capturing that information as two variables. I then have added an event listener into, to my timer, where I'm or I'm actually listening for the actual tick or the timer event of, of the timer, and I'm executing a callback function called move dot. In move dot, all I'm doing is I'm modifying the x and y coordinate by using the combined assignment operator by manipulating the x coordinate based on the value of my x slope variable, and then my y coordinate based on my slope y variable. At the very end, I actually execute the timer, which actually runs through the entire thing. So if I run this again, you'll, again, it starts at the position that I've placed it on the stage. And every single time that that timer clicks, it actually manipulates the position of that object so that it is 15 pixels on the x-coordinate down, I'm sorry, x, uh, 15 pixels on the x-coordinate over, and then 10 pixels on the y-coordinate down. Let's actually modify this a little bit and play with it so we can actually get something that's a little bit smoother. Okay? So right now I have it clicking at every, every 1,000 milliseconds, which means that it's happening at one, th at one second each time it moves. This is the equivalent of having a frame rate of one frame per second. I'm going to modify this. I'm going to change it so that it's just 100 milliseconds, or at 0.1 seconds per, per instance. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to run this again. You'll notice that the animation is a little bit smoother. It's not as stuttery as it was before. But you'll also notice that as even though I've, I've, increased, the, uh, I've, I've, I've increased the smoothness of this transition, it still has a little bit of jerkiness to it. So let's actually make this a lot, a lot smoother. <clears throat> so let's, um, let's actually reduce this even further to 10 milliseconds, which would then be 0 0.01 seconds. So I'm going to run this again. And you say, like, whew, it just went really fast. Okay, It just went really fast across the screen. Now, this animation is actually running uh, only for 10, 10, 10 different positions, which is why I have the timer class here repeating 10 times. Let's increase this to, let's say, 25 okay, and see what happens. So now that I've extended that to 25, you can see that the animation actually goes longer. It goes much further down, uh, down, down the path. Now, as I actually do this, the speed of the animation is, is actually very fast. The frame rate is, is fast, but the actual speed of it going from point A to point B is, is pretty dramatic. If I want to ma manipulate the speed of how fast the actual object moves, I can modify the slope x and the slope y. 
let's actually modify these uh, right now. Let's change this. Let's change the slope x to. Uh, let's change that to say five, and let's change slope y to three, and we'll see what happens. You notice that the animation, the animation reduces in the entire length of of the distance that I go to. It's because the slope, or the actual manipulation of what I'm doing to the object each single time that I tick on the timer event, the slope I've actually have reduced dramatically. By manipulating all these different types of, uh, types of properties, by manipulating the duration of the timer, the number of times that the timer repeats, and the slope, or the, x cha or the change in x or the change in y, by manipulating all three of these, I can create a linear animation that actually meets my specific project. So we're going to continue to play with this a little bit more in the next video, and then start introducing random elements so we can actually change the way that the animation will happen uh, based, on, based on random chance. And we're going to do that in the next video.